Today I'm making a short video about one of my great, great, great grandfathers, Reason Millings Price. Reason was born February 26, 1840 in Leesville, Carroll County, Ohio, to parents James Price, born 1799, and Mary Holmes Price, born 1801, both members of pioneer families of Carroll County. Reason's paternal grandfather, Thomas Price, born 1775 and nicknamed the Governor, was the founder of Leesville, Ohio, and was a representative of the extensive colonial Maryland Price family, whose progenitor, also named Thomas Price, arrived from the Isle of Wight, England, on the Ark and the Dove expedition in the year 1634. Another representative of this family and a direct descendant of Thomas the Immigrant was Thomas Rowe Price II, born 1898, best known for founding the investment management firm T. Rowe Price. United States President Richard Nixon was also a descendant of Thomas Price the Immigrant. Reason's father James Price was born in Lexington, Kentucky and came with his family to Ohio around 1801, in a time when this part of the country would have been complete wilderness. Legend has it that the family, while making their move to Ohio via rowboat, accidentally left James at the bank of the river, two years of age, alone after making a stop for dinner. Fortunately, young James' absence was noticed after traveling just a few miles, and the expedition returned to rescue him. This legend is preserved in writing in the history of Huron County, Ohio, in a section on Meredith Clun Price, Reason's nephew, who was a successful business owner in that part of the state who we'll mention briefly later in this video. James Price, Reason's father, would go on to become a carpenter by trade. Here is an image of James Price found in the historical collections of Carroll County, Ohio, an 1891 publication. James survived to the age of 94 years old. Reason's mother was James Price's first wife, Mary Holmes, the daughter of Isaac and Elizabeth McNabb Holmes, who arrived in Harrison County, Ohio, situated just south of Carroll County, no later than 1805 from Wellsburg, West Virginia. Through Mary's father, Isaac Holmes, she is a cousin of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln, both of whom descend from Obadiah Holmes, born about 1610, an early settler of Rhode Island and an influential religious rights activist. Now back to Reason. We have this single picture of him from a Price family reunion. Reason is the one wearing the stylish hat on the right side of the photo. It's not clear exactly who he was named after, although Reason was a somewhat popular name in that time period, especially among Quakers. Neither Reason nor anyone in his immediate family was a Quaker, to my knowledge, but earlier generations in the Price family were, and there were a lot of Quaker pioneer families who settled that part of Ohio. In the 1840 and 1850 U.S. censuses, Reason is living in the household of his parents in Leesville. From the 1850 census, we come to learn that the value of the Price home was about $1,000, which would be about $33,000 in today's dollars. That doesn't sound like a lot, but back then, it would have likely been one of the nicest homes in town. Perhaps it was where the Price family reunion photo was taken, although all we can see in the photo is the porch. By 1860, Reason has moved to Taylorville, Christian County, Illinois. Both he and his older brother, John W. Price, are living in the household of Dr. William W. Watkins and his wife, Elizabeth A. Price Watkins, their paternal aunt, the youngest sister of their father, James Price. Reason's occupation is listed as a journeyman carpenter. The brother, John, is listed as a master carpenter, and presumably Reason was learning the trade from him as an apprentice. On February 29, 1864, at age 24, Reason enlisted in the Union Army during the United States Civil War. He was a soldier in Company F of the 11th Regiment of the Ohio Cavalry, and he served through September 1, 1865. The 11th Regiment was stationed in the Dakota and Idaho territories to protect travelers and residents from attacks during the American Indian Wars, which were going on simultaneously with the U.S. Civil War. Reason's mother, Mary Holmes Price, died October 2, 1865, at the age of 63, a month after Reason's discharge. In February of 1869, James Price would later remarry Elizabeth Glass, the widow of Lawson Gartrell. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In 1868, Reason himself was wed to Virginia Elena Kale, born 1847 in nearby Perry Township, Carroll County, daughter of Gabriel Sell Kale and the poet Mary Elizabeth Harper Kale, best known for her poem Crown Our Heroes. Virginia was also the sister of actor John J. Wirtkale, acclaimed for his role as the Duke of Venice in an 1884 production of Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, a production which premiered at the National Theater in Washington, D.C. On January 24, 1870, Virginia gave birth to the couple's first child daughter, Mary Effie Price, 
Mary, who never married, would grow up to be a music teacher, likely at the nearby New Hagerstown Academy. Later in life, she was also employed as a real estate broker. She would eventually die at age 79 from coronary thrombosis. In the 1870 census, Reason is living with his wife Virginia and daughter Mary in Leesville, in a home with a value of $300. Reason's occupation is listed as a carpenter. At this point in Reason's career, we know he specialized in furniture. In fact, on April 18, 1871, Reason was granted a United States patent, number 113925, for an improvement in bedstead fastenings. In November 1872, Reason suffered the loss of his sister, Elizabeth Price Roby, who passed away in Minnesota. Being the youngest child, Reason would eventually survive all of his siblings. On March 14, 1874, Reason and Virginia had their second child, my ancestor, Pearl Beatrice Price, who would later marry Francis Morrison Forbes of New Hagerstown, the son of John C. and Nancy E. Morrison Forbes. Frank and Dolly, as they were known, would have two children together. The youngest, a daughter, Elizabeth Marie Forbes, my great-grandmother, who I remember well from my childhood. My parents would take me to visit her at her home in Leesville quite frequently, although we were living in New Jersey some distance away. I never met Dolly, who died from a cerebral hemorrhage in 1940 at age 66, or Frank, who died of lung cancer in 1945 at age 76. Here's a photo of my great-grandmother Elizabeth as a child taken outside the Reason Price home. The family of Elizabeth's brother, John Price Forbes, also has living descendants with whom I'm in contact. On November 9, 1875, Reason and Virginia had their third child and first son, John Merritt Price. John would eventually marry Ada Bell Moore, daughter of Robert and Margaret Brown Moore. John spent his adult life in Carrollton, working first as a printer and later as a machinist and automobile mechanic. He also served on the Carroll County Board of Electors and the Carrollton Board of Education. John died at age 63 on September 11, 1939, four years after the death of his wife, which occurred on July 15, 1935. John and Ada also have living descendants, one of whom I chatted with online briefly today before making this video while trying to research which newspaper John would have worked for. I learned that John's son, Robert Milner Price, was also a printer and worked for the Carrollton Journal, which may or may not have been the same newspaper where John worked. On December 23, 1878, Reason and Virginia had their fourth child and second son, Albert Orlo Price. As a child, I remember my great-grandmother mentioned him while talking to my father, and I remember she referred to him as the inventor, which sparked my interest. I also enjoyed researching his life, so I hope you don't mind I'm going to spend a little more time discussing him in the video before I get back to Reason and Virginia. In the 1900 census, Albert is still living with his parents at age 22. He's single, and his occupation is listed as a day laborer. By 1910, Albert was living in Coshocton as a lodger in the household of a widowed Louise Rose of no known relation, and had recently undertaken a business venture with a piano maker, J.A. Compton. The Compton Price Piano Company moved into a Coshocton downtown storefront at 506 Main Street in 1912. In addition to selling pianos, they established a popular phonograph brand called Stradivara. Stradivara's marketing slogan was known for tone. On November 1st, 1920, Albert sold his one-half interest in the Compton Price Piano Company to J.A. Compton, his business partner, for 10 years. Compton continued to run the company until 1936 when he was tragically struck by an automobile and killed while walking to his favorite downtown theater. On October 27th, 1926, Albert married Leela Corrine Gordy, daughter of Arthur and Stella Irwin Gordy. Leela, a nurse by profession, was born 1894 in Cuscola, Illinois, and had been briefly married to a Roy Stevenson Kohlhausen for less than a year in 1920. Albert and Leela's marriage also ended in divorce sometime in the early 1930s. I have not found Leela in the 1940 census yet, and so I'm not able to confirm for certain whether they had any children during their marriage. However, a lack of DNA matches attributable to the couple would tend to indicate there are no living descendants of Albert. Also of note, no children were mentioned in Albert's obituary. In the 1930 census, Albert and Leela are living in Dover, Tuscarawas County, Ohio, and Albert's occupation is now a manager of a sheet metal production, apparently the job opportunity that prompted Albert's departure from his successful piano business. We know that Albert was living in nearby Yorksville, Ohio in 1932 thanks to a newspaper announcement that stated he had come to visit his sister Mary Effie in Leesville for two days. It's worthy of note that Albert's wife Leela is not mentioned in this announcement, and presumably they were already divorced by then.
perhaps the reason for Albert's move. Based on the 1940 census, which tells where people lived in 1935 in addition to 1940, we know that Albert's home in 1935 was Leesville. Presumably, he had moved in with his sister Mary for a while. The 1940 census also indicates that in 1940, he was living in a hotel in Columbus, Ohio, divorced and working in the field of aeronautics research. I may be projecting my own life story on him and the conclusion I'm about to draw, but it seems like maybe Albert, after his divorce, may have seen an opportunity to reboot his life and may have taken some sacrifices that he couldn't while he was married to start over and follow his passion as an inventor. On July 4, 1939, Albert received his first aeronautics patent for a sustaining and propulsive means for aircraft. So he went from manufacturing ornate pianos and phonograph record players to managing sheet metal production, and then somehow fast-forwarded to designing engines for airplanes, which I consider truly incredible. On May 31, 1949, and February 27, 1951, Albert would go on to receive two additional United States patents for vacuum pumps that appear to have been related to the field of aeronautics. Albert died July 9, 1956, and his obituary describes him as an industrial salesman and inventor. Albert's claim to fame as an inventor, though, is not related to phonographs, pianos, aeronautics, or vacuum pumps. Albert Orlo Price's flagship 1934 invention was the four-way traffic light signal, variations and improvements on which have been the standard around the world since 1935. Someday I'd like to do an entire video on the life of Albert, but I'll need to do a lot more research, as there's a lot to be learned. But if you had to sum him up in one phrase, maybe he would be the late-blooming, eccentric genius in the family. Now let's return to the life of our subject, Reason Price. We left off just before the 1880 census, and when we arrive at the 1880 enumeration, we learn nothing new. Reason is still listed as a carpenter, the occupation is referred to as a cabinet maker in 1880, and he's living with all of the expected family members at the family home in Leesville. The next major event in Reason's life occurred on May 22, 1889, when Virginia gave birth to their fifth and final child, daughter Beulah Marie Price. This event was followed by a tragedy. In August that year, Beulah suffered a serious fall, rendering her both physically and mentally handicapped for the duration of her life. As Beulah grew to adulthood, it was reported that upon agitation, she would have frequent episodes of nervous hysteria resulting in fainting. I assume this means she had seizures. She was also described as perpetually helpless, both as a child and an adult. She survived to age 37 when she died of infection and auto-intoxication secondary to a chronic thyroid adenoma and hypothyroid disorder. I have this picture of her holding her nephew, my grandfather, John Earl Borland, as a baby, outside the family home in Leesville. Beulah died childless on November 4, 1926. By that time, she was surviving with supportive family and on a $20 monthly income as a beneficiary of Reason's Civil War pension. The 1890 veteran schedule indicates Reason living in Leesville, but provides little additional insight as to his life. However, in December 1890, when Reason was 50 years old, Reason's nephew Meredith Clunprice became the manager, or what we now call the CEO, of the Edna Piano and Organ Company. This is a full 20 years before Albert Orlo Price got into the piano business, by the way but Meredith's success was no doubt a factor in Albert's decision to enter into the industry. Sometime, probably about 1891, Meredith recruited Reason to come work as a carpenter and craftsman at the Edna Piano Organ Company's headquarters in Monroeville, Huron County, Ohio. 1894 witnessed the death of Reason's father, James, as well as the death of Reason's brothers, Dr. Clun Holmes Price in Maryville, Missouri, and Basil Wells Price, a local Leesville merchant. Then, in 1900, Reason's sister Sarah Price Carr died. In the 1900 census, Reason reports that he has a mortgage on his home, which leads me to believe that he has recently purchased what I refer to as the Reason Price home on Green Street in Leesville, a town landmark for over 100 years. This is a postcard of what the house looked like in its heyday, with Virginia standing outside, probably taken around the turn of the century. In 1908, Reason's brother and mentor, John W. Price, died in Illinois, which surely would have been received as depressing news. The 1910 census provides some important new information or updates regarding Reason's life. First, it lists his home as being on Green Street, confirming his residence there. The census also indicates that he had paid off his mortgage on the home and now owns the house outright. 
Perhaps the most significant thing we learn is that Riza now works at the Charles Emmett Adair Incubator Factory in Leesville as an industrial carpenter. It's likely not a coincidence that Charles Adair was married to Reason's niece, Neva Drell Price Adair. Also, Charles Adair himself is a descendant of Thomas the Governor Price, so this is in every sense a family business. In 1911, Reason's brother, attorney Isaac Thomas Price of Holton, Kansas, passed away, leaving Reason with only one surviving sibling, his brother James C. Price of Leesville, a hotel owner and the father of Neva Adair, who would too pass in 1920. On March 30, 1917, Virginia, Reason's wife for 49 years, died at age 70 from coronary artery disease. The 1920 census finds Reason widowed, 80 years old, living with daughters Mary Effie and Beulah Marie, still employed at the incubator factory. Reason then passed away at age 83 from chronic endocarditis on October 21, 1923. He's buried on the Price family plot in Leesville Cemetery, where I, as well as my family members, have visited his grave over the years. With my family members, I've also visited the Reason Price house. These are some photographs of my brother and I at the house in 2013. The house was finally torn down shortly after this visit. The owners at the time, who also occupy the house next door, kindly mailed me some pieces of wood from the house to be made into keepsake ornaments. This is a job I intend to do sometime in the near future. This is the first biographical sketch video I've ever made for a family member, but I don't think it'll be the last. I learned a lot about Reason while making this video and really put his life in, in the context in a way that I couldn't do just by adding events to Reason's life in my family tree program. There's certainly a lot more to Reason as a person, though, than the information I presented here. Yes, we can glean that he was a smart and hardworking guy born into a pioneer family in 19th century rural America. And based on the lives of his children, we can get some sense of maybe the ethics he taught them, but we'll never know the details of Reason's personality, what made him tick, what kind of personality he had, what his character flaws were, what kind of deeply held moral, religious, political views he may have had. While in some ways it's sad that you can't capture all this kind of information based on historical records alone, um, I feel like there's still immense value in this kind of study. In making this video, I got a glimpse into a time period long ago and learned a story from that time period as told by a familiar face in my family photo album that I can see a little myself in. And I can see a little myself in his story. And in fact, I've inherited some of his DNA as well as the DNA of his wife, Virginia, of whom I know even less about. If you're a descendant of Reason Price, or if you have additional information regarding his life or the lives of the members of his immediate family, please put them in the comments below and contact me. Uh, until next time.